within enclosed. Well, David, you know, as humans, we seem to have this compulsion to find particular things to get excited about at a particular <laughs> time. You know, something attracts everybody's attention and for a short time, that is the thing we care about most. And there are a few words that, that kind of describe that state. There are, although I should uh, make clear that uh, while I was uh, fascinated by letters, uh, that uh, trend hasn't gone away. I remain fascinated by letters, but there are some things that we are drawn to, uh, obsessed by, but uh, it doesn't last that long. And such a thing is known as a craze, uh, among other words. And craze comes from the old Nor Norse word, krasen, which is to shatter or to break. And if you uh, can understand uh, that uh, a craze essentially breaks new ground, then you can see where that comes from. And also a, a crazed paving uh, is often small pieces, so it's been shattered paving. I, I always love that term, crazy paving. You yes. Know, it made it sound as though it was slightly eccentric somehow. <laughs> a psychopath. Um, <laughs> or uh, <laughs> a crazy quilt has uh, lots of small patches. And also the crazing on uh, glazed pottery, or those uh, fine uh, capillary cracks, uh, is also uh, linked to that idea of shattering. The other word is a vogue. And uh, if something is voguish or it is in vogue, uh, it has French background, Vogue, which is to row. And the idea is if you row a boat, uh, you tend to go a little bit left and then a little bit right. You trend and you drift and then you correct it. So a Vogue is essentially something that just takes you slightly off the main stream or off the main line. And the last one is the word fad. And that's most likely linked to fiddle faddle, uh, which is nonsense and comes from fatuous, uh, the Latin word for stupid. And speaking of alchemy, if you get the word fad and you add an E, you get fade, and most of these do fade quite quickly. <laughs> they don't hang around for too long. It's <laughs> very intense while they're there. Yeah, that's right. I love psychopaths. It's <laughs> got to go down in history. Beautiful yeah. stuff, David. So, so our scores. Rob leading on 19 at the moment, and we are heading for some more letters. Nick, deliver, please. Thank you. Can I please start with a consonant? Thanks, Nick. N. And another consonant? C. And I'll get one more consonant? R. I'll swap to a vowel now, please. U. And another one? A. And one more? E. And could I get a consonant, please? K. And another consonant? S. And one more, thanks. And last letter, D. Time starts now. <laughs> You go, Nick? I got a six. Six? Sounds good, Rob. I have a seven. Ooh, sounds just that little bit better. Let's go with the six first. Caners. Could you start? Uh, C A N E R S. And Rob, your seven? Snack. That sounds like uh, the tasty morsel, David. It does. I'm just curious about caner because uh, it could be a word that crops up uh, in the near future, I think, with uh, those letters. And caner would have been good. Unfortunately, Nick, <laughs> snack is even better. It's a good uh, seven. I couldn't better that. Uh, I found uh, Crusade and Darkens is also there for seven. Nice finds, and Rob did well with seven points. Let's see what word alchemy we can manage this time around. Rob, what would you like? Can I start with a consonant, please, Lily? Thanks, Rob. T. And another one? L. And another one? D. And a vowel? I. Another vowel? O. A consonant? G. Another consonant? R. A vowel? I. And a consonant, please. And last letter, W. Thinking time. <laughs>
And uh, Nick, five also. Let's have yours first. Growl. Could you spell it? Uh, G R O W L. Thank you. And Rob? World. A couple of fives, David. And I'm so pleased to hear that neither contestant said that I just got a five because if you got a five at home, you are playing very well. This was a tricky mix, Richard. And in fact, those fives are excellent. Uh, the six that I did manage was quite unusual. And it's a, uh, a shorebird with a curved beak called a godwit, G-O-D-W-I-T. Well found, David. But with those challenging letters, well done to Rob and Nick. Five each. Let's go back and juggle a few numbers now. And uh, Nick, your favourite combination. Thank you. I'm going to go for the broke single parent mix, please. <laughs> that's one large and five small? One large small? five small, that's it. Thanks, Nick. One large and five small. And our number is four, two, seven, nine, seven, seventy-five. The target to reach is 115. 30 seconds to get there. <laughs> Target that time? You got to the target, 115, nicely done. Rob? I uh, had 118. 118, three off. So uh, bad luck, but uh, let's go with yours, Nick. Okay. So I started off with 7 divided by 7 is 1. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Uh, plus 9 is 10. Plus the 9 is 10. And then times 4 equals 40. Times 4 is 40. Plus 75 is 115. Plus the 75 is 115. Well done. Very good work. Right to that target, nice, neat method. Um, any variations, Lily? Um, yeah, I did. Seven by seven is 49. Take the nine is 40, and then add the 75 is 115. Nice variation, but great results for Nick. Ten points. So he's now on 15. Rob is on 31. Another break, another word mix. Hive surf with the clue, hot and bothered to say the least. Back soon. 